this part of the lecture, we are going to be talking about Concord. Now, before we talk about the rules of Concord, I would like to define what Concord is all about. Concord, another word for Concord is agreement. So, what agreement are we talking about? We are talking about the agreement amongst the elements that make up a sentence. In other words, we are talking about agreement among closer elements. Now, contrary to so many definitions that you will find in some textbooks about concord, many textbooks normally define concord as an agreement between the subject and the verb. But I want to say here that when we talk about concord, it goes beyond an agreement between the subject and the verb. It talks about an agreement amongst the elements that make up the sentence. Now, what are the elements that make up the sentence or the closer elements? We have the subject, we have the verb, we have the object, we have the complement, and we have the adverbia. Now, agreement can take place among the different elements on the on the board, apart from the adverbia. Now, why is Concord not connected to adverbia? Because adverbia only talks about time, place, manner, and so on and so forth. So they are not really things that have to do with what we grammar per se. So when we talk about concord, a concord can be between the subject and the verb, it can be between the subject and the object, it can be between the subject and the complement. So in other words, when we talk about concord, we are talking about the agreement that must exist among the different elements that make up a sentence. If such an agreement does not take place, then our sentence is going to be defective. Now, I want to look at the rules of concord. What are the various rules of concord that we have? The first one is this. When we have a singular subject, or what we call a singular noun, the verb that must agree with it must be a singular verb. My SN means singular noun, while my SS means singular subject, they are the same. So whenever we have a singular subject, the verb that must agree with it must be what? A singular verb. For instance, if you look at the following example, the boy sings very well. The boy sings very well. The boy sings very well. In this example, our subject is the boy. So this is our subject. Our verb is sings. And very well is the adverbia. Now, when we say the subject, when the subject is singular, then the verb will be singular. Our subject here is what? The boy. And it's a singular subject. And it must agree with a singular verb, which is what sings. So this expression is grammatically correct. But I cannot say the boy sing very well. The boy sing very well. Why is this sentence defective? It is defective because the boy is singular, while sing is what is plural. According to our rule, whenever you have a singular subject, you must have a singular verb that must work agree with it. So this sentence because the boy is singular, while the verb sing is what is plural, so this sentence is actually what defective. So when we talk about concord, we are talking about when the subject is singular, the verb of what? Of a singular. Now let me give us another example of this. The sun rises in the east. The sun rises in the east. If I want to break this sentence into its closer element, the sun is going to be my subject. What rises is my verb. Why in the wrist is talking about where it is actually rising from? That is adverbia. Remember, I said the concord is about the subject and the verb. The sun is a singular noun, and as a matter of fact, it was agree what with a singular verb, and the verb there is what it rises. So this sentence is grammatically correct. I cannot say, however, the sun rises in the east. The sun rises in the east. 
Remember, the sun is our subject. Rise is what is the verb. Why in the east is what is the adverbia. But the problem with this sentence is that while the sun is a singular subject, rise is what is a plural subject. So there is no agreement in this sentence. So this sentence is what is defective. That concludes our discussion of the first rule of Concord. Now we go to the second rule of Concord. Very, very quickly. The second rule of Concord. Very, very quickly. Now what does it say? It is the opposite of the first rule. That is rule number two now. Now the rule says that when our subject is plural, then it must agree with what? With a plural verb. Whenever we have a plural now, we must have what? A plural verb. Now, let me give us an example. In this example, let's have something like the children. The children eat noisily. The children eat noisily. If we want to break this sentence into its closer element, we will discover that the children is our subject. It is our word verb. Noisily is the adverbial of manner. So we can say this manner. Remember the concordia is between the subject and the verb. Now, we will discover from this example that the children is a plural noun. And as a matter of fact, it's going to agree with what? With the plural verb. Our verb is what? Is it. So this, this sentence is grammatically correct. Then I cannot say the children, the children eat noisily. The children eat noisily. Why is this sentence grammatically incorrect? You will discover that children is the noun in the subject, eat is the verb, and noisily is the adverbial. But while the, the subject there is plural, the verb there is what is singular. So based on this, this sentence is grammatically what? Incorrect. Let me give you another example to illustrate this fact. The books are mine. The books are mine. The subject here is what? The books. And the verb here is what? Is are. Now, there is a complete agreement here because the book is what? Plural now. Why are is what? It's a plural verb. But this sentence, that thing that I said, is grammatically correct. I cannot, however, say the book is mine. Bear in mind that the book here is actually what? Plural. The verb there is what? Is singular. So this sentence is what? Grammatically incorrect. So once again, this rule states that whenever we have a plural now, it must agree with what? With a plural verb. Now, let's conclude our discussion of the second rule of Concord. Now, we now go to the third rule of Concord. Now, this rule is concerning indefinite pronouns. Indefinite pronouns. What are indefinite pronouns? Indefinite pronouns are those pronouns that refer to, I mean, the number of people that are not specific or the number of things that are not specific. So I can say, everyone, anyone, um, anybody, anything, everybody, everything, and so on and so forth. This also includes words such as what? As each, every. It also includes expressions such as one of, each of, every one of. Now, before we go to this rule, I want to say one of two things here. Now, when you consider these indefinite pronouns, we can look at them in two perspectives. Grammatically, indefinite pronouns are singular, but notionally, they are plural. What do I mean? When we say everyone, they refer to an indefinite number of people. You understand? Let's assume we have 20 people in this room. And somebody comes into the room and says, everyone is invited to my best party. 
even though he has not actually extended the invitation to us one by one, because he said everyone, it means that all of us in this room have been invited one to the party. But when you look at so when you look at it, it's actually plural in terms of notion, but grammatically it's actually similar. So I can say everyone are invited. What I would say is everyone is invited to the party. So we look at it from these two angles, from the notion, from the point of what of idea, and from the point of what of grammar. Now let's give some examples on this. Now look at this example. Each of the boys, each of the boys has a toy. Each of the boys has a toy. Now. We said, and we don't know the number of boys we are talking about. Let's say we have ten boys. And the expression says that each of the boys. So we are talking about every one of the boys. So we are saying that every one of the boys has a toy. So this sentence is grammatically what? Correct. Because we have each of. So the verb of what will be has. I cannot say each of the boys have a toy. That would be incorrect. I can say each of the boys have a toy. That would be incorrect. Remember when we have each of the verb that was agreed with him was what? Was singular. But in this example, you discover that we have each of and the verb there is what? Is a. So this construction is actually what? Is incorrect. Now, what is that? Give us another example to illustrate this point. Um, let's look at another example. Now, for those of us who go to church, I'm not saying this is mine or to spite anyone that goes to church. Now, you have probably heard this expression every plan of the devil, every plan of the devil, and so on and so forth. This expression is incorrect. Why? Because every is functioning like an adjective and it must qualify a singular noun. So I cannot say every plan of the devil. What would I say? Every plan of the devil. Just as it would be very, very wrong for me to say every man has come. I can simply say every man has come. So I can say every plan of the devil. It is wrong. It must be what? Every plan of the devil and so on and so forth. So it must go with what is a singular now. Let me give us another example. Let me give us another example. Example C. You will discover something like this. One of the three women knows my name. One of the three women knows my name. Now, I told us before that whenever we have one of, it must be followed by what? By a singular noun. So, one of the three women, we don't know the number of women, maybe there are three, there are four, but only one of them knows my name. I can say one of the three women know my name. That would be grammatically what? Incorrect. So, this example is actually what? Correct. Look at this other example. Nobody knows her whereabouts. Nobody knows her whereabouts. Now, nobody is another word in definite pronoun. And it must be followed by what? By a singular verb. I cannot say nobody knows her whereabouts. What I would say is what nobody knows her whereabouts. So this expression is grammatically correct. Remember I said this, actually, I'm sorry, but this one is correct. Now, this concludes our discussion of this third rule of Concord. Now, I want to go to the fourth rule. Now, the fourth rule of Concord has to do with singular nouns that are followed by a phrase. Singular nouns that are followed by what? By phrases. Now that's number four. Now this one says that whenever we have a singular noun and that singular
singular noun is followed by a phrase. If that phrase is introduced by any of the words I'm going to mention here, words like with, along with, together with, as well as, like etc. Then, the verb that must follow that phrase must be a singular verb. Let's look at this example. Example one. The chairman, the chairman, comma, together with his TV supporters, with his TV supporters, that involves in an in an accident. Now look at this example. It is a bit tricky. I want us to just pay very close attention to this. The chairman together with his team supporters that involved in an accident. Now what is our subject here? Our subject is the chairman. And uh, this subject is a singular subject. However, it is followed by what? By a phrase. And that phrase is introduced by the expression together with. What is the phrase? Together with his team supporters. That's involved in an accident. Let's assume we have the following options. Was. That's A, B, where. And so on and so forth. Now let's look at these two options. The chairman together with his team supporters that's involved in an accident. Now, I told us that whenever we have a singular subject that is followed by a phrase introduced by any of the words that any of the expressions we have are about, that the verb that must agree with must word for the singular. So because of that, our answer must be what? Must be worse. Now, if you are confused and you don't know what the answer is, you can try this, what I'm going to say now. Now, you identify the phrase. The phrase is together with. So take that phrase away from the expression. So the sentence will now read, the chairman dash involved in an accident. The chairman dash involved in an accident. Can I say the chairman was involved in an accident? Or can I say the chairman were involved in an accident? So if you are confused and you don't know what to choose because of this expression, take away the expression in parentheses and slot towards the singular verb. It will make sense here. So the answer is what is A. Let me give up another example to illustrate that. Example 2. Example 2. Joke, that's example 2. Joke, as well as her three sisters, three sisters, dash, dash, football. Very well. Joke as well as our three sisters dash football. Very well. Let's assume we have the following options. Play football. And B, we have play football. Now, remember I said the subject from the singular. So the subject here is what is Joke and it's followed by a phrase. And that phrase is introduced by as well as. What is the phrase there? As well as our three sisters. That's football very well. Now, the answer must be singular because the guy is singular. So the answer is what is place. But if you are confused, remember what I said you should do. Take away the expression in parentheses. And what is the expression in parentheses there? You take as well as the, our three sisters. So the sentence will now read, Joker does football very well. Can I say Joker play football very well? You find that answer will be wrong because Joker is singular while play is what? It's a plural verb. But it should not be the best answer would be Joker plays football very well. So the answer should be what? To be this. So that once again concludes our discussion of the second, uh, the fourth rule of Concord. Now we go to the fourth, fifth rule of Concord. The fifth rule of Concord. 
the fifth rule of comfort. Now, this rule says that when two singular subjects are connected by and, two singular subjects connected by and, we take a plural verb. This is just a summary of the rule. You have a singular subject, you have another singular subject, and both singular subjects are not connected by and. The verb that was agree with them was what? Was the plural. In other words, we are saying one plus one. Of course, that will give us two. That's what we are saying. Two singular subjects connected by and will take what? The plural verb. Let's look at the example. Example A. Michael and Mary dash each other. A. Love each other. B. Love each other. Michael and Mary dash each other. Michael is a singular now. Mary is another singular now. Both singular subjects are connected by hand. And the rule says that they must be followed by what? By the plural verb. You will discover that love is a plural verb, while loss is a singular verb. Singular verb. So the answer here will be what? Michael and Mary love each other. I will say Michael and Mary lost each other. Look at this example again. The man and his wife dash for Kaduna tonight. A. Leave. And B. Leave. The man and his wife dash for Kaduna tonight. The man and his wife dash for Kaduna tonight. We will discover that the first class of the day is the man, while the second class of the is what? His wife. And both uh, subjects are connected by hand. And the rule says that whenever we have such a situation, the verb that was agreed with them of the world will be plural verb. You find that that was the best option is this. This is what is a singular singular verb. Why leave is a plural verb. So the answer here was what must be leave. So this again concludes our discussion of the fifth rule of comfort, which says that two plural subjects connected by hand, we take what? A plural verb. So let's look at some exceptions to rule number five. Exceptions to rule number five. In other words, we want to look at cases when two plural, two singular subjects connected by hand, when they will take what? A singular verb. Remember, rule number five says that two singular subjects connected by hand we take what a plural verb. But we have some exceptions to this rule. What are the exceptions? We are looking at a situation whereby two singular subjects connected by hand when they will take what a singular verb. That's the exception. So let's look at exception number one. Exception number one. Now, when the two singular subjects connected by hand, when they refer to the same person or thing, a singular verb is required. I will take that again. When the two singular subjects connected by hand, when they refer to the same person, a singular verb is required. Look at this example. The president, the president, and Commander in chief that arrives A have and B has. The president and commander in chief that arrives. Now you will discover from this example that the president is also the commander in chief. So we are talking about one person 
president who has two titles. What are the two titles? The person is the president and is also what? The commander in chief. So in this kind of expression, the verb of the word singular, even though we have singular subjects here, and this is another singular subject, and they are connected by word by hand. So the verb of the word has. I can say the president and commander in chief have a right. Alright, let's look at another example. My father, my father and secretary, secretary of the landlord association dash responsible for the protest. My, my father and secretary of the landlord association that's responsible for the protest. We have the options, we have is and we have be, we have have. Now, you will discover that the person I call my father is also functioning as well as secretary of the landlord association. So we are talking about one person who has two titles. He is the father and is the secretary of, what, of the landlord what, association. So whenever we have that, the rule says that two singular subjects connected by hand, if they refer to the same person, they will take what? A singular verb. So because of that, the verb will go is. I can say now that my father and secretary of the landlord association is responsible for the protest. I can also say my father and secretary of the landlord association are responsible for the protest. That would be incorrect. So the answer here is what? Is is. So that is the first exception to rule number five. Now let's look at the second exception. Where let's look at the second exception. Now the second exception says something like this. Very, very interesting. When the two singular subjects connected by hand, when the two singular subjects connected by hand are qualified by the word each or every. When they are qualified by the word each or every, a singular verb will be required. Look at this example. Each boy and each girl that's what to do. Each boy and each girl does what to do. Now the option is as uh, the following. No and no. No and no. You will discover that the first subject is what each boy. The second subject is what each girl. So the two subjects are what are qualified by the word each. So because of this factor, the verb must be what singular. So the verb must be what knows. So we now say each boy and each girl knows what to do. Each boy and each girl knows what to do. Another example. Look at this one. Every dog. Dick and Harry told to do. Every Tom, Dick and Harry that told what to do. We have the following options. What? B, where, C, is, and D, we have A. So, look at the expression and set it again. Every Tom, D, and Harry, that told what to do. Every Tom, D, 
and hurry. That's what to do. Now, what the sentence simply says is every tongue, every dick, and every hurry. So, because these subjects are, are qualified by what? By every. The verb must be what? Must be singular. Now, we have two singular subjects here. They are was and is. But you discover that the sentence are even referred to something that happened in the past. So the best option there would be what? Was told what to do. So we can say that every tongue, deep and Harry, was told what to do. Every tongue, deep and Harry, was told what to do. Now this concludes our discussion of the second exception of Rule number five. Now we're now going to talk about the third exception to rule number five. Now the third exception is 